Hi everyone and welcome to Legal Limelight. I am really excited about today. We have Shayna Thomas from the amazing female led and owned law firm Level Up. So we'll just give it a quick minute for everyone to get in here. Hi Tyler, <laughs> good to see you. Hey guys. Hi, hi Golden, Retrieval Records, Ave Chola. Let me give it one second to have Shayna come on here. Hi Scott. Hey girl, it's good to see you. Thanks for thanks for tuning in. Hi Shayna. Okay, I'm gonna add you up here. Hi. Hey. How, How are, are you? you? <laughs> Thanks. I'm good. I'm in our lovely call box. We have a ton of calls going on today. So this is going to be my lovely backdrop for this uh, live. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Are you in, um, is it like a big open workspace? Oh, yeah. So we are super collaborative. And I mean, we are just like talking all the time and strategize very openly. So our workspace is totally open. Um, and so it's just like really great when it works. But for calls, we always come in this little call box. Oh, that's so that's so cool. I miss being in an office. This is my office, my home. <laughs> I <laughs> love that. Years. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I we used to work. I used to work in um, in Manhattan, at Denton's, I had my office and wow. I moved part of like my story is like moving because I really needed uh, flexibility and to be home with the two kids. Yeah. So um, we have a lot to talk about. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Let me give you a proper introduction. Thank you. So welcome to Legal Limelight, everyone. Um, this is a show where we spotlight key legal industry um real real revolutionaries like Shana and her law firm who are doing things to um, really change the legal industry and inspire others to uh, uh, think about how to change the legal industry. And also, um, I also highlight entrepreneurs on here because you guys really are very entrepreneurial who are using their businesses to... Um, really changed the game. So that's a highlight of what we do on the show. And today I have a really special guest, Shana Thomas, who is an associate attorney at the woman in led firm Level Up. Her practice focuses on trademarks, copyrights, and contract law. And through her practice, she strategically advises creators, brands, entrepreneurs, and more to protect and monetize their IP. Prior to joining the firm, she worked at Discovery Inc., where she assisted with various licensing and entertainment deals for some networks like Food Network, HGTV, and TLC. She was a member of Estee Lauder's trademark team and helped protect global brands. She graduated from, NY, from New York Law School, and she is on the, trade, the, in, the New York City Bar Association's Trademark and Unfair Competition Committee. Okay, so we have a bunch of mutual friends in common. <laughs> She's a native of North Carolina. Um, she's a former collegiate, collegiate cheerleader. And in her spare time, she enjoys running, traveling, testing skincare products. And she's passionate about serving as a mentor to law students and helping those considering attend law school. And the IP professor said, <laughs> New York Law School, represent. <laughs> Hi, Professor T. <laughs> okay. Great. Thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you for that introduction and, you know, for the opportunity to join the space. I'm really excited um, and really happy to be here. So can we first tell everyone how we, how we met? Yeah, yeah, of course. Do you want to take that story away? Yeah, Instagram. I'm pretty sure I messaged you and mm -hmm. I think people almost think it's weird when I... <sighs> people must, right? Probably think it's interesting at least like, okay, Francesca's a trademark attorney. Why would she have other, you know, other trademark attorneys on the show? And um, I think through our story, it's so important to show other people why you don't, you don't network with people because you need something or want something or you think it's competitive. Right. And totally. when I reached out to you, like, what did that lead to? <laughs> So much. I mean, we hopped on a call, connection call, just 
it, it's it's so great and i really too think um there's just like a lot of common ground a lot of common like work that can be done and collaborative efforts and then as well as mutual friends um, and i appreciate you having me on um a panel for the event yeah yeah i was gonna plug that too you know <laughs> we're really excited to have you <laughs> Yeah, we're. Get, I really want to go into it because I think it's so cool. I think it's amazing. And when you and I chatted, I didn't even realize like the scope of it and how. Yeah. Almost everyone I know has has um is going. Really. Or some people were like, "Wait, how did you get on that? That's so cool. I like want to speak on it too." <laughs> wow. Yeah. Mm, hot commodity. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so tell us a little bit about the firm because I that I think I messaged you and was just so impressed with the branding, the marketing, your your Thank TikToks. You. It's different. So tell us a little bit about the firm and why you guys are a little bit different. Yeah, of course. So um, you know, as you said, I work at Level Up Legal. We are a small but mighty team of six. Um, we are all currently women. We're women owned, women led, um, and founded by my, one of my favorite people in the world, Ms. Shermie Laka, um, who I believe is going to tune into this later. So shout out. Um, we primarily practice business and intellectual property law. And as you know, you said earlier, we work with a bunch of different creatives, um, legal influencers, and startups, entrepreneurs in varying fields. So we do everything from health tech to sports app, to cosmetics brand, and everything in between. Um, but one of the things, or a couple of things that make us really different from other players in the field are, you know, first of all, we offer flat fee pricing because we really believe that legal should be accessible. Um, second, you know, we're all about open door communication because we don't want to gatekeep to the extent that, you know, we can. And that's something that's really important to us as well. Um, and then, you know, we're very collaborative. So we always are having strategy calls. We are always offering up our time because I think it's the, the greatest resource that people have, especially attorneys with their clients. Um, and it's really important to us as a team to make sure that our clients feel heard, supported, and cared for every step of the way. That's amazing. So you, you mentioned flat fees. I do them mm -hmm. too. Um, yeah. I, we even did them at, at, at my prior um, big firm because really? was, yeah, it's just the direction law is going into, but tell us more because there's a, there's so many different ways you could do flat fees. So tell us a little bit about it. Yeah. So we offer kind of two main umbrellas of service. Um, the first is like an a la carte, pick what you need at any given time. So we'll onboard clients um, and they'll hire us to, you know, start their business or review a contract um, for a flat fee, which includes a one-on-one -on -one strategy call, um, the actual review or drafting of the document, the formation of the business, as well as those business documents. Um, filing fees are covered if there's any, you know, that are required. And then once we complete all that work, we'll manage and uh, review continuously, provide status updates, and then hop on a closing out call once the legal work has been completed. So that's kind of what all of those flat fees will include. So we have a flat fee for every different service that we offer, which Love means that. it's a really long web page. Um, but again, we're all about empowering our clients and really, really, really strive to make things as accessible as possible. Yeah. And I mean, like flat fees, the reason why I like them is because I've been in situations before, you know, whether... Uh, it, I've been in all sorts of situations and it, it's almost like a lack of communication at times. So with the flat fee, do you, how, like, do you feel that it prevents any confusion at the oh, end? <laughs> 100%. Um, and that's kind of something that we always say when we're uh, talking to prospective clients too, is that, you know, we're never going to hit you with a surprise bill. You know, we are always going to let you know beforehand if there needs to be any additional charges, yeah. um, any unforeseen costs, any potential risks. So a lot of times, I don't know if you feel this way too, but I, I don't even, I don't play chess. I don't know how to play chess. Um, but I feel like I am strategically moving a piece down a chessboard um, mm -hmm. when I'm thinking out possible legal scenarios and it can get kind of into the weeds sometimes, but I'd rather communicate all possible options um, and backup plans, A through Z, just to be as straightforward as I can with a client. I love it. And with the innovation in pricing, it's not just that. 
it's also like I mentioned your branding and your marketing and your TikToks. <laughs> yes, our TikToks are very they tend to be very popular. Um it's honestly one of my favorite parts of working at Level Up Legal. I mean, I I love so many things about working at Level Up Legal. Um but the marketing piece is a really big portion of that. And I attribute a lot of that to our founder Shermin because she had um previous experiences where, you know, she felt that you had to be this cookie cutter type of attorney, right? You had to dress a certain way and act a certain way and carry this certain um, facade on social if you are even able to have a facade on social. And she really wanted to create an environment here where we don't have to deal with, with that. And we're really kind of trying to change what it means to be an attorney in this modern you know, landscape. And I do think to your point, it's easier for us because we do IP. So as trademark attorneys, we have to understand, you know, the branding that goes behind it and protecting yourselves and putting on that face and really kind of um, reaching into all these different verticals to really expand and propel that mission. Yeah, I think I agree. Like IP, it's easy. But then yeah. You see, I mean, like, where Kelly is really good at this, like, divorce attorneys or yes. trial attorneys and lawyer Britt and Tally. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, I think it's it's almost like, do, do you kind of feel that it's just embracing your authentic self and expressing it yes. on social? Oh, yes. We are 100% authentic selves <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Um, and I think it's great. And I love that I'm seeing more and more attorneys do that too, yeah. and kind of join, um, into the fun. I think it can be very intimidating and daunting, especially for a lot of newer attorneys. Um, and part of that is because of, you know, what you are grown up thinking about what a lawyer should be. And part of that too, is because of the, the way the traditional, um, legal, sphere is shaped and mm -hmm. you know you go through OCI and summer associate positions and um your law school tells you oh well this is the way you have to dress and this is how you have to interview so a lot of different factors there but I love our TikToks here I love that we see you on TikTok all the time too <laughs> um and the IP professor I I love when I'm scrolling on my FYP on like a Saturday night and I learn like a little legal fact I'm like okay adding adding that to my my little mental note Tab. I know. <laughs> I mean, TikTok is, it's, Mark Zuckerberg admitted it, that it's, it's the next up and coming. Um, it's it surpassed Google. And so for anyone who's on here thinking like, should I be on it? Um, I would say so. Do you, would yes. you suggest that they get on? 100%. I mean, it has, we don't do any paid advertising um, or any paid marketing at all. Everything is so organic, and a lot of that is TikTok and Instagram. Well, for a while it was Instagram, but now more TikTok. Yeah, no, it's – and <laughs> Gary V said something about how you can't think of your – you can't think of all your platforms and your content as, like, distribution. You, you shouldn't just blast everything across. Um, and so how do you guys – market across different social media platforms do you post the same content or is it what you're doing on LinkedIn different from what you're doing on TikTok yeah so LinkedIn you know I think because of the way LinkedIn is we try to keep it a little bit more buttoned up yeah um but I do think that TikTok is more fun it's more creative and we hop on every trend we can possibly associate with um in any way shape or form just because again we're trying to get out there in front of so many different faces and really make the content and the educational piece accessible for all. Um, so we'll jump on any trend that we can on TikTok. Instagram, we kind of have a mix, right? Because reels are up and coming on Instagram, as you mm -hmm. know. So the funny content really does do well on, on reels. But we like our informational posts. Um, yeah. Our clients and prospective clients like the informational posts. And we'll get a lot of comments that are like, oh, I, I didn't even know about this. So it, that feels good, you know, when you're spreading that knowledge because knowledge is power. As cheesy Definitely. as that is, I'm an avid believer. No, it's so great. It's so great. And that's, you hit something about how it's knowledge. And of course, like, this isn't legal advice. And right. I think, Attorney you know, right? Like, I hope by now lawyers understand that, that like it's right. pretty obvious that this is not legal advice. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between you speaking at one of your, you know, New York City Bar Trademark Association events um, versus making a post that just reaches right. more people? Exactly. 
And, you know, I think it's just, again, kind of the way that the profession is right now and how it's shaped. Um, but that is changing. And I yeah. feel very positive about that change. You guys are a huge part of it. Like I, I saw it, I saw it, I saw the marketing, I saw the branding and was like, Oh my gosh, the energy <laughs> that this firm is putting out. I am here for it. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, we feel the same way about you and your content always leading the way. And, um, you know, it really takes a community and I think we're stronger together to push that positive change. Yeah. And like, I have, a, I, I have a mindset of abundance. I wish, I hope, yes. and I hope that this inspires more people too, because you really don't, this is not about competition. This is about no. partnering and um, working together. And I have a couple friends who are actually like leaving to start businesses. And wow. I'm like, yeah, here, here's what, here's what <laughs> I learned. I'm happy. To, you know, it's just, it comes back tenfold if you build this tribe of lawyers because you just never know where the relationship is going to go. Exactly. And you never know too, you know, different people have different levels um, and kind of bounds of expertise. And so even though there can be two trademark attorneys, one could have a really specific skill set in cannabis law and, you know, assisting with companies in that space. And one could be more geared towards sustainable fashion because mm -hmm. like you were saying, it really nothing is just general legal advice. It really is um, fact specific and circumstantial. So it's yeah. important to keep in mind. Yeah, it's great. Um, and I know we have we have uh, law students on here, we have uh, attorneys and entrepreneurs. So I think all of this applies to everything, you know, you just summarized and living in abundance and partnering. Yes. I so, love the collaborative. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Um, so I really want to talk about um, the event. Yes. Empire State of Law. Empire State of Law. Um, for all of those individuals watching the live who have not yet heard, um, and those who will see it later, want to be inclusive, um, we Level Up Legal is hosting Empire State of Law uh, August 19th through 21st. It is going to be an amazing weekend conference um, for the legal community to brand, connect, and expand into new and emerging um, legal practices. So, you know, it's going to be fun. Networking opportunities aplenty, a full day of educational panels, um, as well as an attorney wellness event, because we really want to make sure to include that wellness aspect. Um, and we work very hard and we deserve a little break park day in, on Sunday. So amazing. Yeah. And of course, in. Saturday we're morning. So excited. Yes. I was going to say, we're so excited to have you on our panel. We're doing a meta law panel. Um, our panels kind of range, the, they run the gambit. So we're doing a cannabis law panel, um, meta law on metaverse and web three, intellectual property in music, media, and sports, um, legal kind of branding your law firm, law firms as a brand, uh, which is going to be fun. We're going to have more firms and solo attorneys like Level Up Legal, like Francesca, who are really doing everything on social and just continuously putting um, themselves and that positive face out there. And then we're also having this really fun panel on legal influencers and how their voices are transforming the legal landscape. So we're yeah. so excited. Okay, Avery Bishop taking over I the world. <laughs> she Isn't is she literally like the queen. I mean, yes. actually, actually crowned. Like. And it's wild <laughs> because, yeah, actually, actually crowned. Um, it's wild too, because I, I don't know about you, but sometimes I see people on social media and I'm like, wow, are they really that happy all the time? Like, I want that energy. Like, there's no way. And then she came into our office and she is just the most glorious ray of sunshine that I have ever met. And she really is so bubbly and happy and positive all the time. And I so, so, so appreciated that about her. Yeah, it's really exciting. So she just took the bar. Did the bar happen already? So yeah, the bar. Oh, the bar happened. It just happened. <laughs> Sending love to all the bar takers out there uh, have been there. Um, so she, I think, ended up deferring. She's going to take it in February because she won Miss Texas and she has a lot going on with her own personal um, content creation business. So she was like, I just need to go into it with, um, you know, a different headspace. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Also, you have the rest of your life to work. So yeah, it's all good. Well, that's really exciting. And I can't wait to um, hear her on the panel because 
that's another thing that I noticed about your firm is like, however she came in, the fact mm -hmm. that you, you know, that you've offered to bring her on. Um, I think it shows the shift in mindset about social media. By yeah. Her. Yeah. I totally right. agree with that. And we, we viewed Avery as, you know, the same, any member of the team. Um, I mean, her input, all of our input is really valued the same, which is another thing that's great about our firm. Um, and, and it was just a great experience. And, you know, she isn't just someone who posts on social media. Yeah, that's a hobby and a passion, but we're firm believers that you should continue to cultivate any passion that you have, whatever that may be. Yeah. And how it's a reflection, it's a positive, it's a positive reflection of the firm. Yeah. It's a positive like, association. Mm -hmm. It's marketing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, so I talked to um, a group of lawyers at the AACC. Um, it's an in-house group group of attorneys on social media, which was really interesting, right? And like, yeah. in giving the presentation, I, you know, had to think and figure out what I want to say to them. And I ended up like basically concluding that there is a shift in the way um, social media is being embraced. Some companies are totally embracing it, like like you guys obviously seeing Avery as a huge asset. Um, yeah. But some firms are still trying to stifle the creativity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, do, do you do you have any opinion on that yeah I mean it, it's tough right because um you know as I said you go in kind of thinking when you start in law school oh I want to do this type of law I need to go into a medium or big size firm and um have this important job and it, it all is very important right I think any shape or way that you are able to use your knowledge as an attorney you're impacting lives um, and so it's all important but I think that firms really need to kind of shift their mindset and kind of hop on this train with us because it's going to be so important I really don't want them to get um, you know discouraged discouraged yeah I, I mean it can be difficult to make that transition. And I understand there may be some hesitation about um, maintaining a certain level of professionalism. However, I think that you have to have a balance, right? Between making professional content and still remaining relatable and accessible mm -hmm. um, to your clients, your clientele. I mean, you should want someone to work for you um, who is representative of you. And I think that that's something we found too. We get a lot of younger entrepreneurs who are really excited that they found us on TikTok and they have been firm shopping as you know they say um and they're like yeah we just really didn't think that any other firm really understood what we were going through and so that's something that's like really good to hear you know it's so good it's exciting that's exciting to me the term firm shopping I actually love it like and I'm at a firm okay yeah the fact that the younger generation is saying, I have the power, I get to pick where I want to go. Mm -hmm. It's just a, such a different mindset than what's so traditional of career services saying, and which is negative. It's right. there's only a certain amount of jobs. You can't get an IP, IP job right now. If yeah. you are setting your mindset that way, you're, you're limiting, you're limiting yourself. Oh, um, totally. Versus the, I love that firm shopping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's really great. And I always love it because, you know, it makes me remember not every fit is going to be the right fit. Um, and that's okay. Because again, we are, we're service industry professionals. And I think that that is something that we always have to keep in mind too, because we have to make sure that we're really servicing the client to the best of our abilities. And sometimes that really is going to be with a different firm or a different attorney. And that's okay. You know, it's totally true. I, I heard the other day, something like, like a third of the people who watch your content or see your services are never going to hire you. A third of them are absolutely <laughs> going to hire you. Uh -huh. And then a third of them, maybe. So don't make content for the third that are never going to hire you. Who cares? Like don't, right. if, if they were never going to hire you to begin with, don't like feel the fear. Just go all in on that two thirds yeah. of people who either are and love you or who can be persuaded. <laughs> Exactly. And that's, that's what we want. I mean, I personally, I want to come to work every day and work with people who are excited to work with me, work with clients who are excited, um, you know, about what we're doing and really believe in us. I don't want to have to come to work every day and have to persuade someone that they made the right choice. You know, it's, yeah. it's much more fun if they just know. That's great. Well, I love, 
I can't wait for Empire State of Law. I'm really excited to meet you and your founder <laughs> and Avery and the team in person. Yeah, I know. In real life, I'm so excited. Social media is great. I love the lives. Um, but I also, I miss being in touch a little bit more. You know? Yeah, no, this is great. It's fi I think finally people are, um, are embracing it. And the, like the hybrid facts. Yes. You don't have to go love in hybrid. all the time, but it's nice to at least do some conferences or to see each other in person every once in a while. Yep, I totally agree. We work in office four days a week and at home on Fridays. And Fridays, I feel so lonely. And Monday through Thursday, I feel like, oh, gosh, like, how am I getting things done? Like, I want to collaborate on this. And I want to help work on this, too. So, it, you know, it's a delicate balance. Um, I love that. But I love the hybrid. Oh, okay, um, I like to keep these short. So yeah. we're gonna wrap up. But before we do, can you say one point of advice that you would give? Um, you know, let's do for, for, for law students watching this yeah. right now. Yeah. So for law students, um, two, twofold piece. So first goes out to law students who have graduated and just took the bar. In my head, you're still law students, even though you've graduated. Um, just the bar is not the end all be all. You have time and you showed up and that's what counts. So that's my yes. advice for you. Um, and for law students who are currently still out there grinding, trying to figure out what you want to do, um, how to make the best grades and network and do all the things that is expected and required of you. Um, I am just so proud of you. And my one piece of advice is just to be authentic. I think as Francesca and I were talking about, that's so important. That really is the way that this whole um, industry is shifting and we're ready for you. We want to include you in this with us. It's amazing. It's amazing. And something just came to me. I normally yeah. just stop there, but um, <laughs> I think the reason why I do these is because I want to share positive energy. Yes. I like bringing really positive um, people who are doing groundbreaking things in the, in their industry because everything you said, like the fact that you love your job, you love your team, you, you guys, I can, I can envision like your firm <laughs> and making TikToks in your space. So I think it's really important that we see that and hear that and keep sharing just positive energy um, yes. for all lawyers, not just next gen, because they apparently figured it out. <laughs> it's for us millennials and beyond and above that who um are either experiencing burnout or depression mm -hmm. um, or anxiety, um, realizing that there's a there's a better way to do things. Maybe it's finding a better environment or better team. But like yeah. your firm is is the the example, and I'm really I'm really happy oh. you came on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I such kind words, and um, I'm really really grateful for you giving me the ability to come on and chat with you and have this platform. It's so great that you do this. Yeah, <laughs> every Thursday. So yes. <laughs> thank you so much, Shana. Um, thank you everyone for watching. We're here every single Thursday, 1 p.m. EST. Um, have an amazing week. And I'm going to put the link to Empire State of Law. If you are in New York, you have to come. And if you're not in New York, you have to travel. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you again, Francesca. And it was so nice speaking with you. Um, and enjoy the rest of your day. And we Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye, Shana. Bye.